with Jason Whitlock of Fox Sports, who's had what you might call a pretty interesting career in the news media. Also had a very interesting career as a football player. I do want to... I'm actually going to start with you as a football player, but I appreciate you joining me on this silly expedition out to Los Angeles. I love Los Angeles. I think you'll love Los Angeles. I'm sure you've been out here plenty, but now the NFL's back. You've got a reason to visit us more often. Uh, But yeah, I'm looking forward to this conversation. So... I got to hear about Jason Whitlock, the Ball State football player, and Jason Whitlock, sort of the big high school football player who really got into the game and just loved football as a kid. Yeah, I I was someone, my passion for football, I think, started in first or second grade. My brother was on a football team, little league football team, my older brother. In in, Indiana. In Indianapolis. He didn't like football. I went to every practice and would beg to play on the team. He's three years older than me. They wouldn't let me play on the team. But my brother didn't like football. I loved it. There's pictures of me. I would wear a long trench coat and try to dress like Tom Landry on the sidelines. (laughs) Uh, Did you have a fedora? No, but I did have the trench coat, and there's like a famous picture. That's why you wear. I have all the funny hats now. (laughs) Uh, and so my love of football just started at a very early age. And then I just, uh, went to a great high school that at the time had very good football, but, uh, you know, myself and more importantly, Jeff George took our high school football program to a whole nother level. We won a state championship in 1984. I was a captain of that team. Jeff came back the next year, and they won it again, back-to-back state championships. And I think since 1984, we've probably won another eight state championships and put a bunch of kids in Division I football and a few more in the pros. We got Sheldon Day now with the Jacksonville Jaguars. Mm -hmm. He's from my high school. Uh, But And then when I got to Ball State, uh, I was an idiot, to be quite honest with you, Peter, because – And and I say this in all seriousness, I didn't know anything about college. No one in my family had gone off to college. So literally what I knew about college was the movie Animal House. And so Mm -hmm. I signed a football scholarship, but in my mind, I'm going off to have this Animal House experience. And I run into the business of college football, which I didn't really understand. And I ran into coaches that were like, man, you're our top recruit. And I was was an all-state football player. I was very good. They loved me, but I didn't take football nearly as seriously as I should have, especially my first two years at Ball State. And I got into a lot of trouble. I was a problem for the coaches to handle. I was an outspoken guy like I am now. Uh, But I didn't get it. And then in my next two years, I got a new offensive line coach. I played a lot, started. We had a good team play. Bernie Parmley to play with the Dolphins was yeah. one of my teammates. Uh, a few other guys on our team that uh, played in the NFL had cups of coffee, but Bernie paid 10 years. And, you know, at that time, the Mac, really good players came through there. And they still do. But, like, John Offerdahl is one of the greatest football players I've ever seen. He came through the Mac at that time. And when we played Western Michigan, they had a – He was a Western Michigan Bronco. Offer yes, he was. Yeah. Early on and then late in my career, they had Joel Smingy that was the defensive yeah. end of the Jaguars. Terry Crews, the actor yeah. that was in the NFL for a while. Those guys were bookend defensive ends for Western Michigan. So, anyway, I was an underachiever in college football. I was someone that, <clears throat> you know, by the time I figured out the business of football, I'd kind of fell, fallen out of love with playing the sport as much. And I, I was more into wanting to be a journalist. And so... Actually, was there a journalism school at Ball State? Yeah, yeah. Uh, at that, t- It's a great journalism school now. At that time, it didn't have the greatest... Rep- it didn't have a bad reputation, but it wasn't Ohio U or Northwestern or Mizzou or any of these schools. Uh, but yeah, we had a journalism program. And so my fifth year of school, I did not play football to the disappointment and actually it turned into addition by subtraction because they won the Mac without me the next year. But <laughs> I started my career as a journalist then, and I started with a clear goal. I wanted to be the Mike Royko of sports. That's really all I knew was Mike Royko. I'd grown up reading him as a kid, 
and I wanted to be like the great him. Chicago columnist. Yeah. yeah, I wanted to be like him in the sports world. Yeah. So why did you want to do journalism? I read the newspaper as a kid uh, because I was a huge Indiana Pacer fan, and my dad read the newspaper cover to cover, and so I started reading about the Indiana Pacers in the Indianapolis Star, and. At some point when I was around 14, 15, I got out of the sports section and just stumbled across Royko's nationally syndicated column. And the first one I read made me go, holy cow, this guy's hilarious. This guy makes me think. And I just became this huge Mike Royko fan. When I went off to Ball State again, though, I, I didn't put it all together. And I originally was an accounting major. First semester getting a math you're class. One, you're one strange guy, man. <laughs> well, look, look, my dad had an accountant for his bar. And so you're talking to someone who knew virtually nothing about college. And so I, my dad had an accountant for his bar. I said, I'll be an accountant. Getting a math class. And it's like, whoa, I'm not going to be an accountant. A friend of mine, a couple years older, that went to high school with me, he's a journalism major at Ball State and says, dude, you read the paper nonstop. You love sports. You should be a sports writer. Made perfect sense to me. Wow. When did you write your first sports article, and what was it about? Very easy. I just like someone told you this answer or something. But uh, my senior year of college, Jeff George was a senior at the University of Illinois. And my first story was that Jeff George should leave Illinois for the pros. So I gave him that bad advice. <laughs> <laughs> and indeed. Yes, he left and was the number one pick. You always had this thing, obviously, for Jeff George. And you always felt that he got jobbed in his NFL career, didn't you? What, what I always felt is that I love Jeff George. I love his family. I love where we came from. I love what we did together. And so I always wrote about Jeff George with the clear, hey, guys, I love this dude. We're yeah. good friends. So take what I say. This is a friend talking about a friend. And so, uh, you know, as a friend, I felt like Jeff George, uh, if people fully understood him, uh, if people fully understood what, what made him tick, Jeff's really big on loyalty, and if he feels like he's experiencing any disloyalty, he checks out on you. And so, the where did that happen in the NFL? Well, hold, okay. I'll tell you where it started. He he's the number one recruit in the country. He's the LeBron James of high school football, and he can go to any school in the country. And he goes to Purdue, hometown Purdue, uh, thinking, hey, I'm going to stay at home, be loyal to my home state. They talk to everybody at the university because him and his family are not stupid. Uh, Leon Burtonette was in some trouble when Jeff commits to Purdue. But they promise him, no, Leon Burtonett will be here your whole career. After Jeff's freshman year, they fire Leon Burtonett. That's the first. Oh, man, I've been lied to. They've been disloyal. He bails on Purdue, ends up at Illinois. You get to the NFL, and it's a business, and they don't always tell you the truth. Yeah. Jeff doesn't respond well when people are dishonest with him and feels like the, the, uh, it's disloyal or they have to promise him something that wasn't delivered. That's what The Colts were a poorly run franchise. He, he foolishly micromanages with Lee Steinberg to get drafted by the Colts, number one. He wanted to go play. Didn't work out at Purdue. Let me go back home again, lead my hometown franchise. Very foolish thing. If he had been a businessman, a smart person about his football, like John Elway, I don't want to play with the Ursays. Bob Ursay, are you kidding me? Poorly run franchise. Jeff, ego out of control, super talent. Oh, I can go carry an NFL franchise. It's much more complicated than that. And had he been thinking like the Elway, Jack Elway, led by a coach that understood the business of football, thinking like the Mannings, Archie telling Eli, no, we ain't going to San Diego, <laughs> blah, blah, blah. 
he's not thinking that way. He's going to be Superman and turn around his hometown franchise with Bob Verse running it. Not not going to happen. Uh, poorly run franchise. And it just spun out of control after two or three years or four years, and he goes to Atlanta. June Jones benches him. Jeff probably felt him and June Jones are very tight, good friends. Man, you told me you'd never bench me. Again. Yeah. Unreasonable expectations, feelings of disloyalty cause him to spin out of control. Uh, but I, listen, I, he's, he's a What's good— What's he doing now, Jeff George? Uh, he's in Indianapolis, uh, has some business ventures with his brothers, very tight with his family. Uh, he's got two boys. He's got three kids, two boys. One's a redshirt freshman in Illinois, who I think now is the backup quarterback at Illinois. The other son is at our powerhouse high school, is a sophomore, backup quarterback, just started in his growing spurt, now 6'1". Next year, next two years, he'll be a big-time football player. So he's a dad, businessman in Indianapolis. Do you feel like if Jeff George had gone to whatever, let's say Team X, whatever it is, if he had gone to the right place, would he be an all-time great? Oh, 100%. But, you know, he the all-time great thing was out the window after Atlanta. He, he had messed up things and things had messed up. Where I, the biggest mistake Jeff George made, he should have stayed in Minnesota for one more year. He, he Denny Green drafts Dante Culpepper, I think. Jeff should have stayed and played Dante's rookie season. Yeah. Don't immediately run off for the better contract in Washington. You got Randy Moss and Chris Carter, that offensive line, running game. Go really have a knockout 16-game season. Put Minnesota in a position to make a very tough choice on, a, I think, a 30-year-old quarterback at that time in his prime, playing 31, playing at a high level. He left. I think uh, Marty Schottenheimer, whoever was a coach in Washington, not the ideal situation. He got some money, but not. he didn't get to continue to play at a high level like he did for that second half of the Minnesota season. If he had put one more year like that together, I think he would have put – five more years like that someplace else and would have been regarded as, you know, he could have been Rich Gannon. Yeah. Rich Gannon had a great last six years of his NFL career. Played in the but could he have been the worker bee at football that Rich Gannon was? Yeah, I think the second half of or the end of Jeff's career, he turned into a worker. He, he did. did prepare. He had his body in immaculate shape. He was a better teammate, uh, and he did. He does like to prepare for football. The guy, he loves the game of football. He, did, he, the process of preparing for games was never his issue. With Jason Whitlock on the MMQB podcast with Peter King. So let's transition a bit to uh, sort of the future of football. And... You and I have had a couple of conversations about this. You basically think that although football has some problems, that football is really getting a bad rap because people don't appreciate all of the things that football does for a young person and for people beyond that. But just give me your your thought about football may be getting a bad rap and what you think of the game overall well i think football certainly is getting a bad rap uh i don't think its story is being told in proper context i think that if you really understand american history and understand american culture and understand sports importance to american culture and then if you understand what's going on globally but uh, very acutely here in America, there's great upheaval globally and here in America. There is revolution going on, intellectual revolution, uh, social revolution, uh, people trying to change the structure of America. And, I mean, if you look at, just look at our presidential uh, election process and the candidates we have, 
and all the issues in play and why the Tea Party exists and why Donald Trump exists. Uh, none of this is by accident.